Hello everyone and welcome to the second day of Stay at Home Art Club. Um, today we're going to be doing the view from outside your window. I'm holding a pen, that's not what I want, I want a pencil. We're going to be doing a pencil version and then a more colourful version with maybe some kind of more imaginative bits added if the view outside your window isn't really what you want to draw right now. Maybe there's some scaffolding up, I don't know. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do this using some simple household tools. We've got a pencil, a rubber's helpful if you've got one, and um, some colouring pencils are really good. I don't actually have a ruler, so I've used a book um, to draw my window, and then a larger book for any more big lines. Okay, so I'll post a little list of all the things you need, and just like with the last one, pause at each stage of the video when you're doing it. So you don't need to rush ahead, you can just stop it. Okay. Alright, so let's get started. I'm going to be drawing with a much darker line than you guys will be, just so it can show up a bit better on here. And so I'm going to start off with using my small book as the outline for my window. So I'm just going to pop it there. Let's see how this goes. I'm going to draw around it. You're going to square it off. With the edges of the paper to make sure your window is nice and straight and central. We'll see how mine goes. Not bad, sweet. I've got a bit of a, I've got a sash window, so I'm going to do a wee line. Again, squaring off with the bottom bit, just there. That's not where it is in real life, but it's where it is today. For this drawing, we're going to be just doing what we can. I'm not particularly good at straight lines or getting anything particularly square or parallel, so all my windows are slightly made up, but the key is just going with it and seeing what works. Second step is drawing in our window frame. So I'm going to be using my larger book for this. And again, squaring it off with the top and bottom of the paper, I'm going to draw a line around my window. Just representing the window frame, it's not, there's a lot more bits to a window frame, but this is enough for this stage, whoop, this stage of this picture right now. Bit squinty, but I'll sort that out later. And our last one up here. Oh, near enough is good enough. Right, so now it might be the time you're thinking, how are you going to teach us to draw something out our own windows when we're all looking at different stuff? That's a really good question. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to talk you through a few wee techniques to help you get the best representation of what you're seeing as you can. So the thing I'm starting off with is looking at, so I'm looking out on to some tenements and those tenements, the roofs are at slightly different levels. So I've just made sure to look at how big the difference is between them are the roofs the same size? Looking at how do the tops of the chimneys line up? Is one coming up a bit higher when actually they're both coming up to one slightly higher than the other, but one starts a lot lower than the other. So what we're going to be doing is mostly just looking at the proportions of where things are. And it's not 100% bang on. If I showed you a picture of what I was looking at right now, this wouldn't be exactly this by the millimetre, but it's close enough to get an impression. I've also got in my telegraph lines here that I drew using my trusty book and I've just put them in and just missed out the middle sash, okay? So that's step one, is look at the main things you're looking at and mark in gently where they are. I've just drawn these lines really thick so that you can see my picture a bit better. Okay, so give that a go. Draw in generally where things are, not the big details, just the proportions. All right, the next thing I've done is I've put in any other details I've noticed that are quite structural. So I've put in windows. There's a big thing of ivy, so I've vaguely marked in where that is, just a kind of a big clump. I've put in the back of this chimney and a solar, a solar, not a solar dish, what's that called? A satellite dish got there. Um, now, 
Again, I've been leaning really hard to this pencil just so it shows up a bit better because if otherwise be looking at a wee, a wee blank thing wouldn't be able to see it. Um, and I just want to talk a little bit about how I worked out some of these angles and things. Um, so I've drawn my windows in and again I've just been looking at where the windows are in relation to each other. So all the bottoms of the windows line up in a row but they don't necessarily line up with the other ones. So I've just looked, these ones are all slightly above the other ones and again with these ones. So it's just looking at where they are in relation to each other. Same with the chimneys. Another little tip is that angles don't change um, when you're depending on scale. So if you're looking at an angle of the thing you're looking at, it'll be at the same angle on your picture. So you know when artists are doing all this stuff, like sticking out your finger, looking at how big things are, that, that is useful. But another really useful thing is lining up the angle with what you're seeing outside. So when I was drawing this chimney, I held up my pencil to the angle of the chimney and then I brought it over and it stays the same. And that's It takes a little bit of practice, but it's a really useful hint once you get the hang of it. So I just add in any details. This could be the vague shape of trees, lamp posts, I'm running out of ideas for what's actually outside, but that, that sort of thing, okay? Um, and you're drawing it in lighter than this. Okay, this is the last thing I'm going to show you on this drawing. Um, what we're going to look at now is what direction is the light coming from? Because that is what will give your um, drawing a real time of day, bit of setting. So in my drawing, the light's coming from over here. Sometimes I like to draw a circle so I remember where the light is, otherwise I forget. And my light's coming down like this. So it's casting a shadow this way. So I'm going to get a shadow of this chimney here. This is all going to be dark, 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 dark. Nice shadow of my chimney there coming in. So this is what I can see. You'll be able to see it outside when you're looking at it. And then I've got the same over here. There we go. Get that nice and shaded in. And that, again, the angles of your shadows will all be the same. So if you're looking at your picture and it's looking a bit, you can't really work out what's wrong with it, just check all your angles are lining up. That's a really important thing. Um, and then of course, looking at, if you can kind of screw up your eyes, then you can see where the really dark and really light bits are. So you kind of squint at it like you hate it, give it the evils. And anything that's really dark will really stick out to you. So one of the things that I noticed earlier was I had really dark bits on these chimneys, really dark bit here, really dark bit here, and all under there was really dark. So really screw up your eyes and look for the darkest bits of your picture. Alright guys, I'm just going to talk you through some little drawing techniques I've used in this picture, um, just in case you want to have a go at them. So for my lovely blue sky here, I've done some very gentle shading and the way I've done that is I ripped a nice bit of paper, gave it a nice vaguely cloud shaped edge and then I placed it on here where I want my cloud to be and then I scribbled using my pencil all over here and then I gave it a rub and spread the graphite up and into my sky and spread that all over and what that does is it leaves you with a nice white section where your cloud is and I kind of a nice soft graphite sky. Another thing I've done is I've been, when I'm shading in my windows I've just been doing a little bit of shading, again showing where my light's coming from. I've got all the shading on this side and you can see that when you're looking at the windows they won't be entirely dark anywhere. I've also got my ivy. So my ivy I've just been doing, I've not been trying to draw it into too much detail because what you'll find is if you put loads of detail everywhere your drawings actually look a bit cluttered and a bit messy. So what I've done is I've just been putting in some little V's in any sections where I've screwed on my eyes and it's looked particularly dark. So I'm just giving it a sight of a suggestion of ivy. Um, and that kind of gives it enough detail to know that there's something growing there, but not too much that it draws the eye. Similarly, when I've been drawing the slates in, I decided not to draw in the slates on this roof. Because if I drew them all in one by one, it would just 
take a lot of time and it wouldn't I knew I couldn't draw them straight enough for them to look 100% perfect so I've just left them out and you don't really notice to be honest uh, like on this one I've just done some light lines and um, so there's also line weight line weight is very important and um, line weight is talking about how dark and how thick or how light and how thin a line is um, and that's a really easy way to do shading um, so for example I put this line in really dark and quite thick and it already looks like shadow whereas the line on the outside of my leaf here is basically non-existent I've done it really 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 lightly and that makes it look like the sun's hitting it okay uh, and then one final thing is if you want to put anything in front of your window and um, just to cheer it up a bit so I've drawn in some of my plants and for drawing those plants I just did I started off with a kind of a stick and then I drew some kind of teardrop shapes um, so this isn't really where the leaves are at all I've just kind of put in the main ones and then I've shaded them differently again according with where the light is so that's your squinting up your eyes tips that's what will really help with that okay so that's all the tips for drawing in pencil all right guys and now here is a color colorful and imaginative version so in this one I've been using my again my color pencils and I've just been putting whatever I want so this is my maybe my my dream house so I've got a huge cactus because I really really like them lots of books that I'm going to read to become a very interesting person a cat because I'm not allowed a cat at the moment I've got a nice tree outside my house with some flowers on it maybe a cherry tree maybe an apple tree I've got lots of happy neighbours with smiley faces I've got two magpies because it's one for sorrow two for joy I'm a little bit superstitious and um, I've got a lovely big sunshine I'm actually in Japan I don't know if you could pick that up from my picture so I've put a Japanese flag in so I'm in Japan I love their food um, I've gone for some flying pigs as well why not uh, some nice hanging plants uh, and then last but not least I've got the curtains from the Simpsons which is the biggest achievement I think of this picture so yep for your colourful or imaginative texture just put in whatever you want it doesn't need to be real clearly and so I hope you guys have fun doing that and uh, let's make ourselves some beautiful outsides Alright guys, that was your second instalment of Stay at Home Art Club. Um, I'll see you all tomorrow. Um, what's my joke of the day? My joke of the day is why couldn't the bike stand on its own? Because it's... Oh, I've forgotten. Oh, because it's too tired. That's why. Alright, stay inside guys and wash your hands. Take care. Bye.